hello. Good to see everyone. Uh, happy, I think it's, it's evening for me. It's morning for some. So <laughs> I'm so excited to be here today for the State of CSS survey release for this year. Super excited. The author uh, and perfecter of said survey, always mess it up, Sasha is here <laughs> with me. Uh, hey. And Sasha, Sasha, you have been, this is the second year, yeah? For survey? Third year, I think. I don't even third. know. Third. At least third, <laughs> yeah. And then my co-host with me on the other side, Catherine. Uh, and then Hello. we have three very exciting guests. So we can start um, below me and then we'll move across with introductions. <laughs> I'm below you, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you. <laughs> Double check him. Um, <laughs> right. I'm Jay Tompkins. I'm a developer relations at, uh, engineer at Google and I'm also a member of the CSS working group and open UI. There you go. That's nice and brief. I'm Rachel Lee Neighbors, I'm principal TPM over on AWS Amplify. Uh, used to be an uh, invited expert at the W3C and uh, really into web animations back in the day. I'm Stephanie Eccles, aka 5T3PH, um, <laughs> author of ModernCSS.dev, which I think is why I got the invitation today, um, <laughs> and a general CSS educator in terms of what I do on the web mostly. Well, I'm super, super grateful that all of you took the time today to celebrate the release of this survey, which we should all ponder. Sasha, did you say you were releasing it live on the stream? <laughs> Is that what I yeah, heard? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the password right now. So oh my goodness. the people oh my goodness. watching this can check it out. You can check it out. Oh. <laughs> it's an actual am... live release. Are you going to show? show the... Let's see. We have... And it should be good to go. Oh, my goodness. Well, that <laughs> is very, very exciting. Uh, I, I know it's, I don't know, uh, for me, whenever you said that, I was like, lit, live release. So <laughs> I, of course, have seen the sneak preview as have our guests and Catherine. So I'm really excited to talk about really the survey. But Sasha, I want to start off with like, are you happy? Are you satisfied <laughs> with how this survey release went? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... It's never perfect, but I think it's, uh, hopefully it's going to be pretty good. I think the people viewing this right now are going to be the, the beta testers. They're going to mm. find all the typos <laughs> and the data inconsistencies and, and hopefully let me know before the wide world can uh, can see that. So I'm out counting on everybody uh, watching this. How do people let you know when they find one of these typos or inconsistencies? Oh, a uh, good point. Uh, Twitter, at uh, Sasha Grief is probably fine. Or, you know, there's a GitHub link on the page, I think. But uh, Twitter is fine. If you have a mailing address and people can send you. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Snail great. mail. Yeah, just send me the, <laughs> uh, any uh, pull requests. I accept uh, postal pull requests. Via postal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would be mad if I got, like, a bug report in the mail, like the physical... I think I would just find it whimsical. Yeah. I see, I don't <laughs> only if it's handwritten. Only handwritten with, hand -written with a quill, you know? All of their code. Just send it to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Send them. Send them back a letter. Please attach a code sample. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm doing the Elon Musk school of uh, code. code <laughs> have to be out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. oh, we went in a dark place fast. <laughs> it was, uh, we made it less than five minutes. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> I, I'm trying. I'm sorry. I was trying to get the tweet out, and I'm like, I wish I could copy paste from your beautiful. You typed it out so well, Catherine. But yes, check it out if you're watching live or the recording. It is now live at 20, 2022.stateofcss.com. But I am super, super duper pumped. Did anybody have, because I honestly, my I think one of my favorite parts of the survey is the picks. I feel like every year they get better and better. And I think it, it's, it literally was like, as I was going through the results, I was like, oh my goodness. And that's a great resource. And that one, and that one. So like, it was very exciting um, to see just 
I don't know, the, the, the wealth that is there. Cause it feels like something I should like, maybe not print out, but just bookmark and have throughout the year of like, <laughs> because there was just so much. So I was really grateful for that. Um, what about, what about everybody else? Did anything really like a highlight that you want to like dive into first? Anything that was like, yes. Um, don't ask me because it's all a blur for me. Like, I don't even remember what's in the report at this point. <laughs> You're like, what is CSS? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember where I read in it. I, I can't remember if it was somebody's prediction, but it was about um, color and something else being top of the pile. But I, I honestly think, I think Has was the biggest game changer. Like that was the top pick on quite a few people, and I think that was multiple people really, talked about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time speaking and creating content around that this year, and it's it's a good one. And I think looking at this as well, I'm really excited to see what's in. Like it sounds it sounds bad because you've just released this like five minutes ago, but I'm really excited to see what's in next year's already. <laughs> <laughs> because, ah, because no, I'm messing around really with stuff that. that's, that's coming out next year and it's like mm. I want to see that in there now like it's in a spec it's it's making its way up the chain mm. like, it's, it's I was actually way. thinking next year I should do the survey earlier just because I'm so anxious to see uh, the results as well so maybe it will happen like more like in June July um, so we don't have to wait a full year to know uh, state of CSS like in embrace, January, uh, state of CSS February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's moving at such an alarming rate now. <laughs> so true story. I have been out of the CSS loop since I started working on the React team like three years ago. And I have since moved on to Amplify. But if you checked out the new documentation at beta.reactjs.org, that was what I was doing with my pandemic. And before that, I was really into CSS animations and the web animation API. So going through the survey results was, it was great to see how many new specs had kicked off. Like I saw scroll timelines in there. It's so good to see you scrolling functions. <laughs> but there are some things that I am completely excited that exists now. And I'm like, man, where was this three years ago? Um, I specifically, um, today, I, I feel like this is great. It's a great way to brush up on what's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are, you know, just working around in the same code base and maybe not able to keep up with all the trends going through this uh, survey results is a great way to just get a crash course on what's new, what's on the horizon and uh, the links to uh, the links to MDN and can, can I use really help with evaluating each of them. But yeah, scroll bar gutter. That's the name of it. Oh my God. Saving so <laughs> many layouts and re-renders. Yeah. This felt like a year where we saw a lot of stuff that had either just come out and wasn't super highly adopted yet or stuff that was like one or two browsers have picked it up, but not all of them. And so I kind of feel what you were saying when you were like, I almost want to skip to next year's because I think as big a year as this was for CSS, we saw a lot of stuff like just kind of hit the ground this year and next year we'll start to see like the adoption of all of that stuff uh, and getting to yeah, see it in more of like a practical working sense and I'm really excited for that. <laughs> I think it's exciting like you say like there's all these landing but they're not like enough browser compact to be on everyone's radar I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I did a talk on this very, well very recently um, just covering a load of what's new and not even like, I can't even squeeze everything into it. So like someone just <laughs> said grid is life now, like subgrid now is coming. <laughs> yep. But the funny thing with that is like each browser has its own little quirks of how it's implemented it. And that needs to be ironed out. And but it's about I saw that actually as one of the picks and I was like, oh, I have not used this. Oh my gosh. I feel so. So is it not supported everywhere? Is it it it's so, well, Chrome's the one that's kind of we're getting there, and then <laughs> Firefox and Safari. Like, so I built a layout for this the other day for a demo, and mm. Firefox and Safari actually react completely differently, um, mm -hmm. for the same markup and styles. So okay. it's like there's a few little like teething things, and then it will be great, but it's really awesome. Like, it's kind of nostalgic though, as well, because. Um, at the start, like when I was starting out, people used to do like the 12 column grid, like the 960 mm. grid thing. And you can do that with subgrid. You can just do like a parent 12 column and be like, hey, I'm going to line up like 
to grid column four and five. Like <laughs> it can do that <laughs> again. It's kind of wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would have been handy for building the actual uh, results, actually, but yeah, I, I wasn't <laughs> able to use it. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that for hopefully next year. Yeah, if we can just uh, furlough the specs at you for next year to build the uh, the site in and see how well it does. <laughs> it's a great use case for interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the features. Uh, it's just as you know, somebody who's creating content about CSS, you get really yeah. focused on you know what's new and and knowing about that. So I love just the feature graph. I don't know if you want to are you able to show that, but uh, like what was surprising to me just immediately was speaking of subgrid, very low awareness of it apparently. But something like mm -hmm. marker, which I would have expected low awareness on, is pretty good. Um, Flexbox, not a surprise, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I just like this view and just kind of this uh, reality check, I guess, of, you know, what are we doing a good job communicating about, especially when it does have very good support. So yeah, this is just, just kind of fun to mouse around and check assumptions on and, and things. I often wonder sometimes with these things, like, so you see some of these properties like, um, I saw it in the other view, but now, yeah, blend mode, there it is. It did a weird thing with my eyes when you changed the <laughs> <way. laughs> But the, uh, like, you see these, because um, there's a lot of, like, ephemeral, uh, ephemeral, like, popular things that go out there, right? So there's a lot of designer shorts and things that are fired out these days, and they'll be, like, using blends and blurs, and it's like, well, we can do that with CSS, don't forget about us. So we make the shorts, <laughs> and then, like, that gets in people's view again. And then mm. people are like, oh, I know about blend mode now because I saw like a 60 second video using that site. So it's kind of interesting. There's really different audiences for things. So like, mm -hmm. interestingly, like touch actions on there, right? Touch action is not new, I don't think, but it's like. I'm trying to find it in here. <laughs> uh, yep, touch, all the way to the right. Touch action will save your butt in yeah. weird mobile use cases. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah. really, it's really, like trigonometric functions, that'll be, it would be like a niche kind of use case. I when I saw I was like, oh my gosh, we I should I should figure out a, a reason, right? When I saw <laughs> I was like, I need I need a reason to use this. But no, you're right. It is very a performant reason. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, you're right. Ouch. <laughs> I remember using this once on a interactive game where uh when you would scroll, if you didn't, you know, um, if touch properties were uh, just allowed to do their default thing, it ended up with a an in, inadvisable gesture. And so it was kind of amazing when uh, the the front ender I was working with was like, "Oh, we can fix that with touch." Uh, let's let's just tell the browser specifically that's not the intention we're going for here. We do not want a pan or a pinch to happen. Um, and it was really handy. It's one of those things where you don't know it's there. You might be looking for like all these workarounds with JavaScript, but you, you could fix that with CSS. Mm. <laughs> you do not need to install an entire gesture library. Yes. <laughs> I'm having a good laugh at this one in the chat. Uh, just what I always wanted, trig in my styles. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, you didn't know you needed. <laughs> Well, it could be useful for things like charts, right? Pie charts, um, mm -hmm. donut charts. I think charts. that's one of them things, right? It's like, until it's... And this is one of the, the tricky things, I think, with, like, obviously, DevRel on this side of stuff as well. You you need it out there, but you're only one perspective. You need as many perspectives on these things to see how people actually use them and then, like, the power that they bring. So I feel like the biggest example was probably custom properties, right? As soon as they landed and everyone was like, Hey, you can use oh, them at runtime and they change. Mm -hmm. Whoa, like this was an absolute game changer. Whereas it like you couldn't do that in the pre-processor, it was just processed. That was it. It's kind of wild. <laughs> like some of these people were thinking one thing and then something else will completely happen when it lands. Mm. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I'm still really surprised though. I, I feel like we take for granted like the things that we use on the day-to-day. And just assume that like everyone knows it. I was teaching a tailwind workshop this year and I had this one part where I kind of go off and I'm just like 
basic CSS. Let's talk about custom properties. And no one knew what I was talking about. And I was really like, oh, wow. Like, let's, okay, let's roll it back and talk about what these are and, and why these are. And so I, I'm just really, like, really grateful for this survey because I feel like I also, I don't know how to avoid the overwhelming feeling because <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> there's so much I don't know that's coming out or that's already out. And I, I don't know, like, like I feel like I need someone like Stephanie with her, her guides to just like, I don't know, uncross <laughs> my eyes because there's so much. Like, does anybody else get that? Like, it's, it's exciting though. It is. I love well, the pace. <laughs> I think I, I don't always do a great job of explaining this, but the goal of the survey is really to anticipate what's mm -hmm. coming. So it, it's not like a referendum about, oh, what you don't know or don't know, because <laughs> you're not supposed to know about these, most of these. It's really so we can have data like three years from now when something, you know, like a subgrade or, or con at container does become widespread, then we can track its evolution. Um, if we were just waited until, oh, okay, now it's mainstream, now let's ask about it, right. then we would be missing no. that, that first, mm -hmm. uh, those first couple of years. So like myself, I, I scored like 50% or something on the feature no knowledge part because most of these i don't even even after i've added them to the survey i still don't know what they do <laughs> was well, that really interesting point there's something we keep trying to think of like it it is overwhelming there's so much out there and it's only like it's a good and a bad like if the browser if browsers move quicker and we get more things into stuff quicker then it's like great that's just more stuff you've got to learn right but the, <laughs> but the idea is to make everyone's lives easier so it's kind mm. of like edged sword but i always try and say to people and i i get asked this a lot at like cons and stuff which and i just sort of say try not to worry about all of it just learn the things you need for the job you need to do like the thing you need to get done just mm. find the thing that does it and just focus on that and you'll just you'll just pick it up as you go along that's how that's how everyone else does it i think i think it's kind of tricky as well for people that i don't know maybe live online see a lot of this stuff people throwing stuff around Mm. it's kind of overwhelming from that sense because you see everyone doing all this other thing and like if you're just in your own little bubble going along ticking on you're probably not as overwhelmed mm. so, yeah. it's a whole there other is. issue though that's probably not related to state of css survey. <laughs> <laughs> and once you do figure something out jay is really good at this <laughs> make a demo <laughs> share it with the world honestly so i don't know if this thought helps make some of this less overwhelming but consider that because it's all new, none of us know what we're really doing with it. The best practices don't, you know, they're in progress. We're all figuring it out, how we're really going to incorporate these things. Um, I'm kind of looking over the features. I can't remember if like cascade layers and scope. I can't remember if those, I see nesting in here. Mm -hmm. um, and container queries, you know, these things that are going to change everything. <laughs> But we ha we do have to wait for the support to catch up, right? So I think I, I just encourage folks to get that awareness, absorb these different sources in whatever mm -hmm. format makes sense to your brain, whether that's demos, articles, Twitch streams, YouTube videos, you know, the content is out there. Um, find what makes sense for you, have discussions with your team as you need it, and, you know, Basically, you know, maybe try to at least check if CSS has it before you use <laughs> a different solution, right? Like mm. that's the way to start incorporating it. Um, you know, I'm excited for being able to drop JavaScript. Um, <laughs> that's where my series came from, right? Is being talking about like, you know what? I can do some stuff now that I used to need a jQuery plugin for. So, you know, just the more you're exposed to, the more you remember that it exists and the more you realize opportunities to use it in your work. Mm -hmm. There is one question I have for the folks here. Having spent some time in the JavaScript community after being in the CSS community, like back when I was in CSS, you could learn all of CSS inside and out. It was sort of like the golden era of, of science. You know, there was a period of time when you could go to school if you were, a, you know, a European dude who was of a noble descent and had enough money and the family was like, yeah, sure, science, whatever that stuff is. You could go and learn <laughs> all of science, all of physics, all of chemistry, all of it in one lifetime. And the sum total of human knowledge. That's not true anymore. Now you get specialized. You get to, you know, start with a, a big funnel at the top and then dive deep. And 
you see something similar happening in the React community. Back in the olden days, people would build all these boilerplates and you know, jerry-rig systems together with Bootstrap, et cetera. But eventually the frameworks you know, became better and better at getting the developer experience down. You don't have to worry about caching, just use Next and plug into this hosting provider. And now all of your image tag woes are taken care of. You can focus on building a content. And I wonder if we won't one day see the same thing with CSS, mm. where instead of becoming the master of every single thing, we work on top of frameworks that do a lot of the heavy lifting so you don't have to think about clearing floats. You don't have to really worry about, you know, should you use Grid or Flexbox to yeah. center an item? But you might dive deep to learn things, or you might be one of those deep divers who builds that framework mm -hmm. because you still need deep divers, but you only need like one or two to build a framework that hundreds of people could use. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the development of CSS frameworks today. Are we going in that direction? Is there still a need for, you know, complete mastery of vanilla CSS? Or, or where do you think the community is going? I think it's actually moving away from it. From it's frameworks. From it. I, I was yeah. going to say that as well. I think, okay. I, think you see, I think you see a shift. Like my, my background isn't visual or CSS at all. Um, I started as a middleware engineer, and then I spent a lot of my time with React and Jamstack and stuff for the last... Well, I've been doing this a decade, so most of the time. And um, I moved more into this stuff. And I think you probably see more of a shift now from people being like, hey, I'm going to try and do all this without, like, because people are saying it's easier and we see more static stuff. And especially on the framework side, if you look at the most popular framework would be Tailwind, but Tailwind doesn't actually teach you how to do anything. It, um, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it's all just utility style, right? So yeah. You have, to know, yeah. you have to know how it, to use it. Font tags. Yeah. If, so, if anything, it, I don't know, like it hurts my it. brain because you have to go against a lot of things that you're like taught to do. So, but it's, it's super popular and it has its, it has its pros, right? It has its like, it has its wins, but its wins aren't what people see on the face value people think mm. oh i hate that look at it it's just utility classes i don't want to write flex px8 auto whatever grid like keep in reading my diary <laughs> <laughs> but, maybe we can look um, at the usage tab for this it has a different the different <laughs> win right the win of it is that it abstracts people away from thinking about probably the harder part of css which isn't actually applying the styles it's how you structure them how you put them in the site how do you render them in a page how do you load them because that's mm. where you get hit with performance stuff so it's great yeah. like you could write a bundle of css get all your styles rad load the page and lighthouse says no <laughs> <laughs> you're not having a performance score here because you haven't divvied up your styles and worked it all out and made it performant and that's kind of where tailwind comes in it kind of abstracts you away from that you just worry about the styles but mm. you have to write some kind of weird syntax that you have to get used to and it's kind of interesting because then that's that flip, right? The JS frameworks kind of abstract you away from architecting the styles because you just write the CSS and then it bundles it and does it for you. So you're kind of in like a weird place because it's, yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in. That's kind of my take on it. It's a bit, <laughs> we're in a chicken and egg situation. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to point out that you, if you look at the usage for CSS frameworks, it's kind of static or even trending downwards, except for Tailwind. So I feel, I really feel like Tailwind is the outlier because mm -hmm. it really does its own thing. But overall, the category, like, it's less needed um, mm -hmm. because CSS itself has got a, a lot better. Uh, yeah. But question here, perhaps what we're seeing is that Tailwind is consuming the usage of the other frameworks, and that's why it's on the rise. Maybe this is the use case that 80% of the market wants. And so they're shifting to ta at Tailwind. You see a similar thing in the frameworks for React area where Next is spiking, but it also comes at the cost of other frameworks are you know, decreasing in usage and not the first thing that people are reaching for. So that might be what this graph is showing as well. I'm also wondering, Sasha, did you consider, and maybe I just don't remember having the question on the survey, but I, I wonder, I would be interested to know how this, com how frameworks, established frameworks compare to folks that create design systems 
And I know that those are going to be localized, just generically, do you have a design system? I can't remember if that was a question. Um, and I know Tailwind in particular is very popular for use in design systems. Okay. Yeah. So, we so this one, which is not exactly what you were asking, but yeah. we do mainly CSS4. And design systems is in third place with about a third of the respondents. So mm. yeah, not the, insignificant. Where's the statistic that says the design system people are the ones that knew about cascade layers? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have that yet, but soon. <laughs> yeah. I actually love, one of my, love is maybe a strong word. One of the things that I always find most interesting in the state of CSS survey is the huge gap um, between the framework uh, interest and usage mm. in which you can see uh, bootstrap which normally hangs out down here at the bottom. Uh, and if you ask anyone, they will most likely jump on the opportunity to kind of dunk on Bootstrap. I will too. <laughs> we just have years of, of trauma about it, okay? <laughs> but immediately you jump to usage and it skyrockets 80%. It's like Flexbox it, and Grid. Yeah. So I'm so curious. Do you guys think that is entirely legacy code bases that are still hanging around? Do you think there are other factors at play here? Are there people that are evaluating and saying, well, Bootstrap's not interesting, but it's a workhorse and it'll do what I need and are opting into Bootstrap today? WordPress. Well, the, the way the question is phrased, it's like, <laughs> WordPress have you is used it? <laughs> it it's like, have you used it before? So Used it and it's... would you again? Yeah. Say, or right, usage so. is either used it and would use again or used it and wouldn't use again. So as long and as both you of those contribute to this usage. I think you have that information here, don't you? Let's see. What, whether it would be yeah. used or not used again? Uh, I think it's in the graph it's... below it. Oh, here we um... go. Yeah. Would use again. Obviously, chunk percentage here would not use. Not use. But still 30% <laughs> would use yeah. again. You can kind of see how Tailwind is, you know, doing a bit of a hockey stick and Bootstrap is having a slow decline, mm. um, but they're the most blue of all the charts. <laughs> it's because it's you must it's be like looking at sandstone. There must be a tail strap or something that we're missing. <laughs> tail strap. <laughs> I love it. definitely a lot of, you know, since Bootstrap's as bootstrap has such a long history. I like to remind folks there's so many legacy projects, which is most of the work and jobs out there. Mm. You know, if you're not in a position to rewrite, bootstrap's still gonna hang around. That's why jQuery is saying, you know, <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. these projects that have such a long legacy in comparison to the 30 year history of the web, right? Mm. So <laughs> we're we're gonna see that long tail for quite some time, I think. I also wanted to, I'm going to change the subject a little bit because I saw a comment that I thought was really interesting, uh, which was this one. Recently, I've been wondering if we'll see a split between layout CSS and what this person has called paint CSS, breaking down grid flex boxes, kind of structural elements of CSS, as opposed to the more stylistic focused backgrounds, fonts, colors side of CSS. I think this is so interesting uh, because... Mm. Anyone who's talked to me knows that I cannot make it through a conversation without talking about Brad Frost's front of the front end and back of the front end. And I wonder if we will see a similar split within CSL, CSS itself. And that is kind of what I think this comment is, is implying. Curious on your thoughts, gang. <laughs> I'm sorry, the difference between structure and theme. Sorry? Peter Paul Cock. I don't know how you Say his name. Yeah, PPK. <laughs> it's a sensitive subject, this one. Is it? Mm -hmm. It is? Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> this this breaches into a kind of an interrupt thing. But so um, app property, which is on the survey, right, allows you to do the whole type safe um, custom properties. And it allows you to do things like animating the property value. So you'll be able to like transition things like a background gradient, color stop, like smoothly or do other things, um, which I have 
pushed to the limits in previous articles. <laughs> but the other side of that, which all comes under this big branch called Houdini, was this concept of like paint worklets and stuff like that, which allows you to do really cool stuff with the paint side of CSS. And although it's there, it's kind of fizzled. It hasn't really, I'd mm -hmm. love to see it come back, but it hasn't really gone anywhere. Our property look like the one that would be closest because it gives people a lot of power to do things, um, which they haven't been able to do before. Like being able to even transition between different colors in better ways or animate hues and things is much better for that. But yeah, that whole side of it was really interesting and it's kind of disappeared a little bit. So it's sensitive to me because I would love to see it happen, but mm. I don't know if it will or not. Mm. Any ideas why uh, <laughs> why Houdini didn't take off? Um, I'm not sure. I think Surma would probably be the, <laughs> the better person to ask. And, um, I don't know too much on the background of why it didn't take off or if it was just different, you know, it needs everyone to be on board with it. I don't know. I was uh, a bit late to the party on it, but I was enjoying using it while it was having its moment. It's still there. People can still try it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like being able to sort of do something cool, like package up a background that's like interactive and then ship it and just be like, cool, I'm going to use this background of like, I don't know, the matrix and just have it on all my buttons. And it would just work. <laughs> it's pretty, <laughs> pretty sweet. But yeah, I don't know. I don't even think. I wonder if the site's still live. I'm gonna have to go and find it now. What about um, Stephanie, Catherine, Alyssa? Uh, have Have you ever had experience with Houdini or heard of it before? I had heard of it. I had not started to play with it. It was one of those things. I actually feel like we discussed it a moderate amount on last year's Data CSS, <laughs> um, where there was someone who was really into it. And it was one of those things where, for me, it didn't yet have the um, like the support yet. And it was like, that looks cool. I would be interested to try that out in a, you know another six months or so. Yeah. And you're right, it just kind of never happened. And I don't think that I had like consciously registered that I stopped hearing about it until this moment. But yeah, it was one of those that I was kind of like, I'll keep an eye on that. And then it vanished. <laughs> yeah, no, same story, because I know we talked about it, but I'm I'm trying to actually look. I see it. It vanished there. like Houdini, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's a terrible name for it. <laughs> it's Houdini Ready Yet dot com it was like a oh, bit no. of a status tracker for it. So some things like made it to working draft, um, candidate recommendation and proposal, but it's sort of fizzled. And there's so many things landing, I guess. That's the other side of it. Like it takes a long time for these things to get spoken about and worked on people meet once a week once every two weeks the agenda you know it's an hour long there's only so much you can squeeze in one thing i've realized I, I feel is a lot of the mm -hmm. process of you know developing css or even javascript it's really down to individual people sometimes like uh, two three people can have a huge influence and it you know if someone gets burned out or or they move on like a whole chunk of like the CSS spec can drop off or, or on the contrary, if someone is really motivated, they can make a huge difference. And, mm. you know, like someone like, um, Miriam, Suzanne, she, they're not the only one, uh, by any means, but there's someone who I'm always impressed at how often that name comes up on specs mm. and blog posts. And so well, if many you're out there and you, you feel like, oh, it's big corporations with hundreds of people making this stuff. Uh, that's not the case. You, as an individual, can have a really big impact as well. Yeah, for sure. What were you saying, yeah. Rachel? I have a couple of theories as to why it didn't take off. I was really into Houdini back in the day. I, I actually started working in big tech because I really wanted to work on bringing web animations to Edge. Uh, but Edge ended up using Chromium, so uh, it got web animations by default. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, things I wish I could have told my younger self. Um, but one of the challenges I always saw with Houdini, like to Sasha's point, 
I think it was Sasha who was saying that it's a tiny screen and I'm trying to go, I'm trying to memorize everyone's voices because I'm not always seeing whose mouth is uh, moving. Sasha, was that you or was that you, Jay? Yeah, yeah, that was me. All right. <laughs> I want to. What was it? One, what it was the guy with the beard and uh, the baseball cap. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Lots of features will just stall if nobody's paying attention to them. Like CSS Grids, for instance, started at Microsoft back in the day. And it <laughs> wasn't the best. Like there were a couple of flaws in the proposal. So CSS Grids 1, it, it was launched. And people were like, eh. Because Microsoft didn't have like the great web development um, outreach program that Chrome later came along with. And Chrome was like, wow, Grids, these are really cool. We should get this going again. And suddenly developer advocates were launching all this content about it. And then Firefox was like, oh, I got to get in on this too. And the next thing you know, you got Jen Simmons out there and Rachel Andrew. And it just kept going. But notice, like, it started. There wasn't a lot of effort being made at the individual level after a point because it was just a spec. It was a different time. And then it got picked up again. And you see that, you know, this could happen with Houdini too. Um it could happen under the right momentum. But the interactive crowd that Houdini would really ap approve, uh, appeal to at the time when Houdini was being worked on was when that crowd was kind of letting go of Flash and moving on to things like Greensock. And so that story may still yet to be told. Uh, there are good enough solutions on the market. There are some things Houdini does that the solutions can't do. And it might just take the, the right momentum, the right... Uh, the right interest from the right groups of people driving standards uh, to push it over the edge, mm. or we may never hear from it again. It, it may be <laughs> one, of those, one of those proposals, mm. but I'm excited uh, if, if, like we... if it comes back. <laughs> it could Sorry, be as well. I didn't mean to cut you off. I feel like we've actually seen kind of a similar thing happening with nesting, right? Because I feel like I remember a little bit of kind of talk about native nesting and some of that, and then SAS was everywhere and everyone was like why would we bother it's built into SAS, right but then i feel like actually with custom properties we're starting to see that tide turn and a little bit more of kind of interest and momentum building behind vanilla css again now that i'm just going to be using SAS isn't necessarily the given that it was like you know five or even god three years ago <laughs> you know like <laughs> There's no, so many times. Because when I first started like nesting like was seriously like for for reals, not 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 like a winky face. I kinda <laughs> I kinda teared up a little bit because <laughs> I knew that was the death toll for Sass. And I love her. <laughs> I think I think mixins are keeping Sass's head above water, which is maybe more of a descriptive <laughs> term than yeah, I really need to form. It's more of a pink. It's more of a picture than I need to paint. But I think until we have a, a replacement for mix-ins, I mm. think Sass will You're saying there's to... hope? <laughs> I think it's going to limp along for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I love about standards. Like, developers are wiggly geese. They're always going to solve their problems. They're not going to sit down and have people wiggly. tell them you stay in this pasture and eat the grass here. They're going to be like, no, I see that, that is the grass that I want. I'm finding my way out. I used to raise geese. I was on a farm for my childhood. <laughs> but if a goose doesn't want to be in a pasture, they find a way. They find, they're like <laughs> velociraptors. They try, oh, they find their way. God. And that is it's Wiggly Goose Club. I'm a member. And uh, so, you know, people create the things that help them solve the problem. And then... Mm. It's on, uh, it, it just falls all the way back the dependency line, uh, standardization, paving those cow paths, you know, mm. React has all kinds of weird foot guns that people use around the data story and that causes uh, frameworks to try to standardize solutions for that, which actually reveals modalities and developer experiences that people want. You know, CSS folks, we wanted nesting wasn't really a priority for standards bodies until SAS showed up and was all like, you <laughs> said you wanted nesting. Boom. And so like, those are top three features you should be standardizing for CSS. Go for it. W3C, get it in there. And now they have a clear roadmap to follow. Uh, I, I love the, the innovation chain in this regard. I love how any feature you love in a library that makes things better for you and gives you a better day-to-day -day has a shot of becoming something that is performant and used by anybody 
no library required. I am. Um, I'm going to go with the unpopular opinion though and say, yeah, don't really miss nesting to be honest. So. <laughs> Oh. But I'm not I'm not one of those crazy people that nests off the screen, okay? Your homegirl just likes her little ampersand every little, now and then, you just know. A little like, double and mm-hmm. hover, you know, like oh, come on. Not crazy. I uh I wanna highlight this incredibly contrarian comment that we got from Napalm, uh, who loves to come into the chat and throw curveballs. And I, I appreciate that and I mean that genuinely. I think this is a really interesting take. It says, uh, when we get these features in vanilla, they feel worse than what they copied. Uh, I wow. am interested to hear if anyone agrees, disagrees. I have a little bit of a theory on this, but I'm going to Oh, there's wait. a theory. Ooh. I feel like I've been talking a lot. I want, I want some other people to talk. <laughs> I'm happy to I'm let someone agree, else go but first. I'm going to put my thought together and let other people speak. Ooh. Steph, any thoughts? <laughs> I feel like it's well, I'm also a SAS fan, so oh, <laughs> in terms I know, of that, I know we're not just talking about fun. stuff copied out of <laughs> SAS. I, I agree with the, you know, definitely Rachel has brought up a ton of good points about how that flows in, and I am happy with that process. I guess I I can also hear the the viewpoint, you know, that it's different syntax, but you know, folks who are making those decisions, the CSS working group they have a lot against them, right? They have to think of backwards compatibility, upgrade Mm -hmm. paths, progressive Mm -hmm. enhancement, um, accessibility, uh, syntax, developer experience. Like there's so many features, of course, um, to consider. So um, I, I agree, but I am happy again, agree that they are coming to the language. We can benefit from the browser's more powerful rendering engine where it's already existing for us. Um, and again, this isn't CSS exclusive, right? Like any language that either introduces its own new features or has features um, that are very similar move to the browser, uh, we're always going to experience that adjustment. And I think for the greater good, it's it's been good. But I have to duck out. So um, oh. thank you for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> and- <laughs> I didn't want to just like duck out and like I hated the conversation, but so. no. <laughs> we'll see you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was going to um, say about this from a broader kind of perspective. So I guess it's interesting because uh, there's a lot of work that goes into these specs as they kind of come into the browser. So one of the specs uh, my name's on at the moment is the anchoring spec. So like the ability to tether elements to other elements with an anchor name property. And then like you give it fullbacks. So like when an element moves around a viewport. So like the classic case is a tooltip, right? If a tooltip shows outside of the window, then you want it to go underneath and on top, right? This will be built into CSS. There's a spec for it. It's part of what I like to call the trifecta, which is anchoring popover to build the stylable select, right? Which is what everyone's wanted for since the web came about, I, I imagine. <laughs> but um, it's kind of interesting. So this, Popper JS and Floating UI were the really popular ones. So mm. like it takes time. So like I like, and these people aren't opposed to having conversations about this stuff. So like we ask them for feedback on stuff and they give it and then we'll take that and try and work on the spec more. And it's it's funny, like we're talking about the paint stuff. And I think at the moment there's kind of a shift to trying to get these uh, spec things that are going to be more useful for people. And yeah, like sometimes there's a rough V1, but like the intentions are good. Um, So I think of like another one that's kind of cool that was, I can't remember what made me think of it, but the scroll length animations spec is like a really interesting one, right? Because a lot of scroll length stuff is done in different ways by different libraries, but when it's in the browser, it will be off the main thread. So technically it will probably be better um, (laughs) because it doesn't use like, like some people will ask, oh, isn't it just like an intersection observer or like a request animation frame under the hood? But it's not. It's done in a really quite clever way, which means it will be super performant, which will be really interesting to see when it lands. Like the polyfill isn't like, <laughs> good. Like I used it for a recent project and it is pretty good. And I just imagine what it will be like when it's like buttery smooth. Mm-hmm. So really interesting topic. Like it's just different different specs i don't think too much about the pre stuff anymore because i just think like 
yeah, like as you said, Mixon's is probably like one of the last ones <laughs> standing. <laughs> so, because Cascade layers and all that kind of stuff is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, it's kind of my take. <laughs> Listen, she goes in the same pile as Coffee Script. I will always love them. I mean, no <laughs> one can departed. ever say a bad word about Coffee Script. I won't have it. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. I also have to bounce, but I did want to say that uh, in response to um, the, uh, the 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 copy, the standardized, uh, you know, when when the standard option is worse than the thing it was created to imitate. <clears throat> web components and with that i take my leave oh <laughs> thank you for coming love it's a good thing this is the state of oh that was funny <laughs> yeah if you could just get rachel back on for state of js and as you start the call just play that clip to her and then yeah. say elaborate mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so you could throw this bottom and then dip I brought you back. It's been a month. What do you it's think? Been- <laughs> we haven't stopped thinking about it. <laughs> um, oh, but my goodness. I am going to take this opportunity also to keep us moving a little bit. Um, we've covered some good stuff. We've lost some folks, but we're going to keep talking. <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to peek at was the demographics. Mm. Right? I find this inherently interesting and it's also something that i feel like i see come up especially on twitter a little bit every year there's a little bit of feedback um just kind of on the the reflection of the demographics that this uh offers us right um i loved the age i got so excited with the the 1.9 percent i was like what there oh babies (laughs) <laughs> it took I me was... to find the 1.9%. I was... <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I just thought that was excellent. And I, I can't, I hope that number grows and grows. But I love I... the fact that there's a 1.1, though. That means that, like, I see life can go on yeah. whenever you want. I okay. feel like. I feel like I'm somewhat in the middle of this bell curve, and as it as I get older, the top of this curve seems to move with me, and I'm always really <laughs> reassured by that. I'm Wait, like, you're cool reassured the- by it? Because when I saw that, I was like, "Oh yeah, the- we're all getting older mean? together." What does this mean? <laughs> Why are we moving with the hump? <laughs> I, I mean, I think the hump will probably always live here. Right? Oh, you think in- so? Oh, okay, okay. Even as we start to age out of it, <laughs> and- do you agree, Sasha? Whoa. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would expect maybe we'll get younger, but uh, it's also due to the demographics of the survey itself, right? So right. You, if we one day we reach more students, then it will get younger. If we reach more corporate developers, uh, it will get maybe a bit older. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about this was the relatively high percentage of participants, uh, this like just under 30 who declined to share personal information. And that number is relatively consistent across pretty much all of the kind of personal information questions, right? So whether you have a degree, what your salary is, uh, I think gender was also right about there. We see a consistent about 30% of folks who just don't necessarily want to share. Um, and I did... Because I was so curious to try out the customized data tool, which I'm not going to do here because it's a lot of like copying and pasting, but rest assured that I I played with it a lot and it's cool. very neat. <laughs> but I went back well, that's and at looked. least one person. Who I did, this thing. and <laughs> so you I and just... me, we're up to two people in the world <laughs> who have played with it. Yeah. But what I found uh, was that. Um, The percentage choosing not to disclose has gotten a little bit higher each year. Like it goes up by about 5% every year. And I thought that was so interesting. And I'm curious, obviously, we just have the data here. We don't know people's intentions. We don't know their context and what's shaping them. But I am curious to hear any theories on why people think things might be shifting in that way away from Mm. necessarily wanting to disclose that kind of information. Well, in previous years, we always required you to create an account to fill out the survey. And this was the first time you could do it mm. anonymously. 
So I think be, before that would weed out like the people who would not want to disclose any private information because they would just not disclose their email address and not take the survey. So that might be a reason. Um, and obviously, I mean, you know, the, the goal is not to accumulate, you know, private information on people to, <laughs> to do anything like nefarious. So I don't really, it doesn't really matter to us uh, if, as long as we get, it's more for, for us, you know, to know who are we reaching, because um, I don't even think that's necessarily representative of the overall uh, developer of uh, ecosystem no. of CSS developers. It's more for us, so we can track from year to year, or how are we doing in terms of outreach. So, mm. you know, obviously, if people don't feel comfortable for whatever reason, disclosing their salary or gender, age, that's totally fine with us. <laughs> Napalm says Meta and Google. <laughs> people are fed up with sharing personal information. <laughs> but no, I think you make a really good point. And it's something that I like to make sure that we call out every year, right? That this is not necessarily representative of everyone who is writing CSS. In fact, we can pretty safely say that it's not. It's representative of who we're able to reach through the survey. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it can feel, I think, really disconcerting to see numbers like this, especially, right? Um, or this. Well, and also because there's not like a, <laughs> A definition of who is or isn't a CSS developer, right? It's not like right. If because people are, I think are used to surveys of a, a country, for example, you know, uh, we surveyed or a census, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, kind of roughly how many Americans or Japanese people or whatever there are, and you can know right. what percentage you surveyed, and it's kind of a fixed target on some level. But here, there's no, you know. If you wrote one line of CSS one time, are you automatically a CSS developer, developer if you do it like 10% right. of the time? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think it it's not so much about like matching some kind of ideal uh, ratio of you know this demographic to that demographic. It's more about mm -hmm. improving from year to year and, and representing different viewpoints. I think that's the the, the goal more than the, the numbers themselves. That actually brings me to another point that I wanted to talk about, which I've pulled up over here. This question, the CSS versus uh, JavaScript balance, I think was new this year. Am I, yes. am I right? Yeah. Did I miss yeah. it? It really stood out to me, which, which is why I was like, I think this is new. Mm -hmm. um, but it was interesting that even like in these results, right, which we're asking people specifically, we want to hear your opinions about CSS it's skewing towards more people <laughs> that write JavaScript or people that will say, I write mostly JavaScript. I'm curious, <laughs> like, whether that is kind of indicative of the people that we're reaching or whether that's indicative of how people are kind of writing CSS. Because when I think about it, I've never had a job that's 100% CSS or that I could really say, Mm. I wrote more CSS than I wrote JavaScript. Even when I was the like quote unquote CSS specialist on a team, my split was probably closer to 50 50. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're spot on. Um, first is the demographics of the survey. You know, obviously we, we started with the state of JS first, and that's the more well known survey, at least it was mm -hmm. the first couple of years. Um, but also, like you said, if you think about it, like, you know, I used to write HTML. But now I only write G JSX, right? So in my mind, it's all JavaScript, even when I'm just doing pretty much <laughs> HTML. Um, so the list is over there in Angular, like right templates yeah. can't relate. <laughs> I was yeah. helping my husband with his his React app the other day, and I went over to his computer, and I'm an Angular person, and I was like, "What? What is this?" And he goes, "That's my markup." And I said, "It's a JavaScript file." And he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, I "Yeah." can't help you with this. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't touch that. What is? <laughs> I can see Alyssa like slowly hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I'm in the minority. I think so many people on the React side of life these days. Um, so that's, I but don't know about that. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait for the state of JavaScript result to find out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe the question itself was a bit flawed i mean if you think about it that way because it should be you know css versus javascript versus html versus typescript versus markdown <laughs> no right but, no and then where know. do you draw the line of like yeah how far are we going to divide this but 
I liked what MD Coder said of CSS isn't getting me a job though. And I don't, uh, I don't yeah, know I'm if sure there's very yeah. many jobs out there for just CSS only. I feel like it's very much like Catherine was saying, like, it's a weird, it's a weird space. Cause I will say that I do feel like my CSS knowledge has gotten me a job mm -hmm. and yet I also needed to know JavaScript. Also. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like it was one of yeah. those things where I think I would not have been hired if I had not been hired to be the CSS specialist. Yeah. And yet, even in that position, it was not realistic to have someone only rate CSS a yeah. hundred percent of the time. They didn't need me yeah. to be the the React subject matter expert. They needed mm -hmm. me to be okay yeah. at react and i have continued to be okay <laughs> at react <laughs> <laughs> but more and more the things that you are styling are going to be created through javascript right so it makes sense that you would yeah. spend time <laughs> with javascript even if you're actually like you said yeah a css mm. expert mm. yeah i think it's something right and I'm Papa's over here. I'm, I'm like trying to weave all this together. I think it's something we're seeing a lot more, right, with some of the CSS and JS. Uh, that mm -hmm. definitely seems to be the path forward in a way that we probably wouldn't have predicted. <laughs> but as things are moving to be more like truly framework driven and we're seeing, you know, Angular, React, Svelte, Vue, you name, pick your poison. <laughs> this approach of writing CSS and JS and using these kinds of tools to style is something that I think has really kind of taken over. Um, yeah, so that I'm, I'm not I sure might... how many people are writing truly vanilla CSS. Anymore. I might push back on that a little bit. Jay, I don't know if you have thoughts on that. I feel it mirrors our conversation about frameworks from before. Yeah, a little bit. I feel like, especially with some tools, it's like people want to people are trying to break out of that cycle a little bit mm -hmm. um but yeah i think the thing is I, I always just say you know just use the tool that's right for the job right do especially yes. I, I know it's a it's a very um generalist point here but do the do the work for the role you want as well <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do visual stuff do lots of visual stuff and you'll find a job that does visual stuff like that's kind of, yeah. kind of how it kind of how it I works it, it does fall like that you're right. <laughs> right i made lots and lots and lots of random demos and now i still make lots of random demos it's a big part of my job so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're like dropping this intense knowledge bomb and it's like going throughout like hit the history of my life of like oh my god he's right because like the last job i left my boss was like i don't want you to go into any more conferences just code and so the next job i found was like mainly going to conferences like so you're <laughs> your soul it's the wisdom like it's oh. hitting me in the face. I love it. <laughs> no, I know. I did the same thing. I <laughs> built a bunch of component libraries and then got hired to build more component libraries. And then someone said, doing? hey, you want to be the dev advocate for this component library? <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, I really hope you want your future to be in surveys. I'm just saying. Like, I, I, hope, I just, I foresee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think I foresee surveys in my future as okay. well. Yeah. <laughs> Probably next year um, and the year after. <laughs> oh, <it's bad>. oh, man. <laughs> All right. We are, we have like 20, 25 minutes left. Sasha, what are some topics we have not hit on yet that you would love to dive into? Are there um, any parts of the survey we wish to jump over to? Yeah, uh, I wanted to point out some new features. So if you go to features, uh, well, as a matter of fact, and uh, anyone like layout, maybe we can look at subgrid. Uh, there's like that little comment icon on the right. Uh, I don't know if you guys Ooh. saw that. 126. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just dropped. Wait, what? Are these comments from like just now? No, those. Are... Uh, no, these are from Wait. the whole survey. As yeah. as you went through, you could leave a comment oh, on any comment in the CSS survey, not feature. a comment on your thought of this in this moment. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love Subgrid. Very excited. Not globally yet supported. Yeah. Looking forward to this. Lots okay. of this. Lots of browser support, <laughs> which I feel. Yep. So Subgrid is the one feature that has the most comments, uh, and the other ones usually have like. 
10, 15 maybe. Yeah. Um, wow. Do people have any comments on cascade layers? Yeah, we can Let's we can go check them. that out. Oh, that's such a cool feature. feature. Would that be here? Where would uh, cascade? Where is it? No, maybe layers. other uh, other features. I know. It's like, well, it's kind of a will change. cascade layers. Fourteen comments. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> See, I'd have completely missed that button, so I'm really glad you've shown me this. <laughs> Hurry up and get support, Firefox. <laughs> this is, like, is so feedback gold mine. Used it with Tailwind. Mm. You can do that. <laughs> I love this. This is awesome, Sasha. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this one right is where I've kind of landed on it. Looking but forward it's... to this. What it. Use it's complex. complex. I would site. use it for oh. complex stuff. And there's someone else who said that. Well, it's very interesting because there's like the quickest win ever with cascade layers is to just import your third party styles with an anonymous layer. And then all of your unlayered styles will override it. So you never mm -hmm. have to worry about bowing mm -hmm. vendor styles, which is like such yeah. a big win. But yeah, the yeah. one quirk I find, and I was wondering if there was any feedback on it, if someone had come across it, but if something fails in your cascade layer or your layers aren't supported, then none of your styles load. Oh, <laughs> which is really interesting. And it doesn't seem to come up much, but it's one thing I I wonder if people hit that ever. I want to talk to this person. I'm so, I'm so curious. <laughs> Wait, what? Not the page author? I don't understand what that... That's interesting. <laughs> this is... I don't this know. It's actually that was. so interesting, right? This idea of feature should benefit the user, not the developer, is basically how yeah. I'm gonna sum that no. up. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't agree. Wait, well, but right, but then there was one. I'm trying to find. I think it was in other tools. Aren't right? what are the things? Aren't like, oh, most yeah. of these features for us and and not for the user? That's a really yeah. inter It is I'm an interesting curious. comment. If you could just hand minify your CSS Cheers. as well, that'd be great. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but right, like. Here's library evaluation <laughs> rankings. So when people are choosing <laughs> what to use, they're ranking documentation and developer experience top right. two. So this idea of it's not about the developer is actually almost fundamentally incorrect because it does, yeah. it's not even going to touch it if it's not documented well and if it's a pain to use. Then other stuff, the user experience, the accessibility, stuff that I do think really matters. Really matters, but not as much apparently. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. But I mean, be real. Would you back it up? There is. Would you use something that had no documentation at all, even if it claimed to be incredibly accessible? I've tried. It's really <laughs> awful. It's really, really <laughs> awful. Have any of you ever, seriously, like tried to use a feature for something, not even in CSS, that had literally zero documentation? Have you? Have Yeah. I mean, uh, then have you know. I? Very hard. Then you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've created a lot of features that have zero documentation for other people to use. <laughs> And, and you're like, and then I wrote the docs on it. Yeah, there you go. You're welcome. Is that just so you can hear your DM ping off? Constantly? Yeah. <laughs> Tell them lonely, so that's a way to get company. Oh. <laughs> These are some community. really good life tips. Like, you know, something even... with no documentation so you get lots of messages. So you get friends. That's how you get friends, Catherine. That's how you get, that's how you get life enemies. <laughs> this is just social hacking basically. <laughs> oh, actually, I've always been surprised by how much time people will invest to figure things out. Like, I've had messages like, hey, I've been looking at this for three hours and I can't figure it out. And I was like, why didn't you just ask me? Like, <laughs> yeah, but people oh, are, that's, yeah. That's There's kind of like feet. Stockholm Syndrome where, where they're, <laughs> they've, I think a lot of well, developers have been trained not to expect any hand-holding or any help. Yeah. And they'll just, they just think they have to figure it out by themselves, but I think that's wrong. Well, that kind of goes back to that point you made earlier about like, I can't remember if it was you said it or Steph. Steph shared the link for it, but like getting involved with the specs and stuff, like everyone can shape this stuff if they want. Just get out there and ask questions. It's it's kind of interesting. Like it feels, and even myself, I was a bit like that when I started getting involved with these, uh, the working group and that. And it's like, is this going to sound silly for me to ask this? Like, but mm. really, no questions are bad question. And like, a lot of spec questions are like use cases that people haven't thought of, or mm -hmm. you know, because people have a very. It's all about perspectives and collaboration that shape these things. So it's really interesting. <laughs> like, yeah, that is something that I want to like do a little kudos for the React community on because they, uh, with the new React eighteen stuff, had a great like public. 
um, discussion that was happening and agree, uh, explain like I'm five, like um, discussion topic in the like public repo where they were talking things out and people could be like, what is hydration and what is suspense? And it would get broken down for them in a way that was non-judgmental and just really, really good, really helpful. It would be neat to see some of that, I think, brought to CSS. Because I think a lot of people, a lot of developers can find CSS a little intimidating. Mm. Uh, and I just really thought that what React did with the React 18 working group was kind of above and beyond in, in being really welcoming and being really inclusive. So it would be cool to see that kind of become the norm across all, Even all just kind like, of frameworks yeah, and libraries. Like it's more transparency Sorry. or getting it mm -hmm. into people's viewports more. Well, I think the difference, like React, it's still like there's a community, but it's still run by Facebook and that there's yeah. a team, like, there's a React team. There's no like CSS team that's all in one place. Um, so it, I think definitely it requires more work from the working group even to coordinate between themselves because yes. everybody has other jobs and other priorities as well. Um, but so one of the things I am hoping to do through the survey is to provide this kind of funnel where people have a, a way to voice their opinions, provide feedback, and then in turn that can help the working group have this knowledge mm -hmm. centralized in one place and maybe we can help like build more of a community and more of a dialogue like that but i think it's definitely way tougher for css than for something like react yeah yeah no it's a totally different game in terms of like resources um so i don't mean to draw a one-to-one -one comparison there and i <laughs> don't mean to imply that css is not doing well because i mean look at everything we got in the last year <laughs> like Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible how much gets created. Like, for, for me, like, I'm very new to seeing this side of it and being, like, part of the working group and stuff now and, and things like the open UI and just seeing, like, there's not, a, there's not, these people don't talk, like, every day. Like, engineers and stuff will talk, but, like, the actual groups don't meet up, like, right. once a week or something. So to see the amount that gets created from such a short oh. period of time of people meeting is actually quite amazing really. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fascinating. Kind of on that note, as we're getting ready to wrap up, I do want to ask everyone what their predictions are for CSS in 2023. <laughs> uh, be before we wrap up, can I? Can we have like just two minutes to talk about another new feature that people yeah. might... Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean might to... Not see. Um, so That's it's my a data, data explorer. Data explorer. <laughs> Did sorry, you guys one have more a... time. Sorry, you the, the are... data, data explorer uh, page. Uh, like the third page, did you guys have a chance to uh, play I, around with that? I was looking at it and I, I was like, okay, so gray is 1%. Yes. <laughs> what is extra? Like if I'm looking at one, what does it, extra, okay. like more than one? Wait. So I'm going to explain this as best as I can, but it probably won't make any sense. But okay, <laughs> let's try. <laughs> so the idea is, you know, if uh, all you know is that a lot of people are, you know, uh, work for free and that they have uh, one to two years of experience, it doesn't really tell you if that's because there's just a lot of people who fit that demographics or because those two variables are somehow correlated or have a higher chance of occurring together. So that's what it highlights, right? If you have a lot of blue dots, it means that result is more than you would expect. It's more than you would expect if you only looked at um, demographics. So, for example, uh, uh, if you know uh, lots of people like the color blue, um, and lots of people like apples, uh, then you might expect there's lots of people you know who like blue and apples. But if you take uh, you know very few people have uh, let's say brown as their favorite color, and then very few people like oranges, whatever. If you do see a lot of people in that specific, you know, intersection, then it means that there might be something. I, I should have picked orange as the color. I'm dumb. But uh, <laughs> you, you see what I mean? Like, that's the idea we're trying to highlight where it's not just due to the demographics, but actually because there's some kind of relationship mm. between those two things. So here you can see it, it, the, the blue dots kind of make the diagonal line, and it makes sense because um, the more you earn probably the more experience, like, or another way to say it in 
higher earning buckets, people with lots of experience are going to be overrepresented compared to the general population. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's trying to show. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of tough to explain in a way that makes sense. So I'm not, hopefully people uh, kind of figure it out by playing around with the thing. Uh, but the key key thing is you can actually change the the parameters. So mm -hmm. if you click on the, the yeah, right there, you can pick um, yeah any two, not literally any two variables because uh, not all questions are in there uh, as of right now, but a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here you can see uh, yeah. Um, I picked a bad one because the distribution was heavily skewed yeah. in the percentage of men who replied. So maybe... But because this this view, uh, you can toggle between percentages and, and count. So percentage kind of equalize, equalizes out the distribution differences. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, but one that's cool that I, I found is uh, if you pick, I think it was years of experience versus... Um, maybe uh so instead of demographics you can pick um on the first drop down you can pick uh, libraries and let's say style components so yeah you can see basically that um if you just look at the first row like use it would use again the, the blue dots appear in the middle, so three to five years and six to 10 years. So it means in those uh, buckets, the use it, would use it again, um, answer is overrepresented. So it really made me think of that meme where you see a curve and like, is this a bell curve? It's the same at the beginning and the end of the curve. So people who don't know anything <laughs> are probably not gonna use style components and people who have lots of experience are also no. probably not gonna use it. <laughs> If you put the meme, yeah, the meme, yeah, that perfectly <laughs> explains what's going on here now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what your meme explanations for the statistics. Brilliant, right? Like that's <laughs> that's what the survey is missing. But no, like that you is... have the, the boot bootstrap, like developer walking with bootstrap and looking back at Tailwind, the like the, the girlfriend <laughs> meme. We got to do some memes for the studio JavaScript is what I'm hearing. <laughs> we better come ready. <laughs> Not just memes, but memes to teach the people, you know? It's this, memes, is the, this is where Ed with a really mission. shine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. These are like two really cool new features. Are, mm -hmm. do, are there any other hidden ones? Like, I don't want to miss the buttons if there's um, secrets. No, I think that's it. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's mainly those two. Oh, um, awesome. Maybe by, by the time State of JS rolls out, I might have some other things. But um, I, I'm already curious to have people play with that. And you can, uh, I mean, on this thing, you can change the the scale. So so if you want to make this chart more compact, you can mm. change how many dots are people are represented per dots. Um, like I said, you can toggle between count and row, and you can share uh, the URL So also. Uh, updates based on the mm. the variable so you can share that's your results nice how does it take oh, and you can click you can click on a cell sorry i forgot to mention that yeah how long does it take you to put all this together so sure it's incredible work like honestly <laughs> um so it's does that thing that uh, data component thing it took me like a couple weeks of work um yeah probably around two weeks three weeks uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, but also very fun to to do. And it was nice to see it like kind of take shape. And <laughs> the first time I showed it to my wife, she was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, well, she still said that yesterday. But anyway, hopefully uh, it does make a little bit of sense. And it's going to keep improving. So I'm, uh, that's why there's a little uh, bubble that says it's a preview version. And I'm sure people will have feedback. Yeah, that's great. Just... It's really great. Oh, that's uh, okay. We didn't see that. There you go. We didn't see no, that. Nothing happened. Look away. My Look bad. Away. 
Actually, that's where all my feedback links go to. So. <laughs> <laughs> to redirects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it triggers like, yeah, infinite redirect that crushes your Just browser. Just an eternal load. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, how funny would that be? You think someone's actually done that? Yes, someone has yeah. actually done that intentionally. I can <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank another you. thing we didn't mention is that uh, uh, Leah Veru was uh, really instrumental in mm. uh, setting up the survey this year. Um, I wish she could have joined us today, but yeah, probably not because she she would just you know, basically we would just have to let her talk because she actually knows what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> her knowledge would probably eclipse uh, most of us, at least myself. Um, but yeah, she was really awesome. She she really helped me and pretty much took the lead of selecting the features. Um, also like the, um, the comments, like leaving a comment feature, we went through a lot of iterations uh, mm. together. So yeah, big shout out to her. Um, and she wrote the conclusion for this year as well. So that's also very interesting. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yes, she she had a conflict that she couldn't move when to be here, but I am I told her I was very grateful for the work that she's done. So that's awesome. Any yeah. other shout outs? Shout out. Wow, that was like shout out a lot of lot of shh noises shout for out, me. Shout out, yeah, it's hard yeah. to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean all the people who are helping uh, Eric. Um, he did, did a ton of the backend, so all, all the the app that you actually use to take the survey, all the backend of that. That's him, and um, he was able to set up the whole system where you can take it anonymously. Mm. So that was really good. Uh, Killian always helpful with like mobile testing, and go check out uh, Polypane if you need a good developer browser. Uh, probably forgetting lots of people. All the volunteers who do the translations also. You know we have people like. Uh, mm even in, in areas that are experiencing a tough time right now, like Russia, Ukraine, um, people are still finding time and, and contributing. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and then also I'm sponsored by a couple companies, Google um, and uh, Niji Box here in Japan. And um, yeah. So, You're in Japan? Yeah, I'm in Japan, yeah, in Kyoto. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Tokyo next week. Oh, very cool. Are you, okay, well, let's, Set something up later. <laughs> <laughs> Please eat delicious food for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a Big Mac now in your honor. <laughs> oh, I know. I saw those. <laughs> I saw those t-shirts. I was like, oh, those are. Yeah, we got to show. Yeah, there they are. Grrr. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Chris. It's uh, very it's, nice. It's, we didn't have time to design a new shirt this year because I had too much to do. So it's. Sorry for dropping the ball on that, but um, the previous shirt is still very cool. I don't know why you would change something that's not broken, Sasha. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't know if people will buy the same shirt twice. No, oh, I see. I see your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same shirt. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the chat, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. We've been highlighting uh, comments as they come in, but if anyone has any questions, please oh, shout yeah, yeah. them. Do I have a rock climbing wall behind me? Yes, I do. It's kid oh. size. <laughs> Wait, are you saying you don't personally use it? Is that what you're saying with that statement? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, because you it don't would fall oh. down. It would fall. Crush me. <laughs> and also leave a big hole in the door that it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But Maybe I do the... I do do rock climbing like at a regular gym. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, maybe let's us do our wrap ups and predictions. And if anyone has questions, now is your chance. Drop them in the chat, and if we have any by the time that we're done, we will answer them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, ooh, there's already one. You mentioned a few times contributing to the CSS spec. How would you recommend getting started? Uh, the first thing I want to highlight here was. Steph's uh, comment, right, where uh, she highlighted the GitHub where all of the specs and language discussions happen, which I'm pretty sure are uh, open for participation. You can leave comments and reply to stuff in the chats there. 
beyond that, <laughs> did y'all have any recommendations for someone looking to get involved? That's the best place, I think. Get involved there. Check out. Um, yeah. Check out the GitHub. That's the main place to get involved. Yeah, you can also just write about upcoming features, you know, write blog posts. Um, you can even get paid for that if you write for CSS tricks or some other <laughs> blogs. So, Also, um, if you want to get involved, like, in a different route, depending on what you're up to. But um, so, for example, my route into, like, doing the anchoring spec and pop over and select menu, that's actually through OpenUI. So that's, like, a weekly mm -hmm. telecon. Um, there's a Discord. There's, like... Um, I always forget the URL, but it's openui, yeah, openui.org. Um, and yeah, you can get involved with that. And that's all about styling like native controls and making better controls for everyone. And that's like a thing that's, yeah, completely open people from various companies, um, getting involved, which is a pretty cool route in, and it's pretty like. Yeah, you can just join in on IRC and Discord and the Telecon each week and just see what's happening. I was like trying it. OpenUI.org, right? Yeah? Yeah, open-UI.org. Aha! That's my <laughs> like, Oh, something's not working. <laughs> I it's you up there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, it's a really good, um, that's a really good intro if you've not sort of done that kind of thing before. Like, it's, it's a pretty friendly group. And uh, you can just get involved. Cool. I mean, all these groups are friendly. I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> We're really mean. <laughs> don't hang out with us. <laughs> uh, this other question we got, I uh, was wondering about the survey, why some of the properties which haven't shipped yet are asking, have you used it? Yeah, that's really mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, we actually had a discussion with Leah about that. Um, and I, I think... I wanted to do like a separate category for, you know, non-shipped features, but she pointed out that it's really hard to come up with a good definition of what constitutes shipping because mm -hmm. a feature might be available in preprocessors, but not in regular CSS or, you know, in only one browser or mm. all, in every browser except one. And so I, at the end of the day, we decided, okay, we can't really draw a line between what's shipped or not. Mm. And I think you, I think you definitely do the right thing as well because, yeah. um, have you used it? It's applicable to anything. As soon as it's available on this survey, if it's available behind a flag or it's in yeah. one browser, then you could have used it. And I actually had a really interesting conversation with someone recently, and it just made me think completely differently. This, uh, these people use like they build internal tools, and when you're building internal tools for a company, well, you set the agenda, right? You set the mm -hmm. browser matrix. So <laughs> they're just saying, "Hey, you've got to use the latest version of Chromium." There you go. And so they can be on the cutting edge of features. You know, if someone says, oh, it doesn't work in Firefox, well, why are you using Firefox? Like, so, <laughs> like they, they can do that. So there are places where people yeah, will do that. It's kind of interesting, but not something you really think of sometimes. Yeah. Um, and the other aspects, if we keep the same questions for all features, then we can do those historical comparisons across years. Um, and we can just see like the used it level go from zero to one to 10 to whatever mm. yep that makes sense that was going to be my guess was like yeah well you could use it in chrome canary you could use it in you know whatever <laughs> with right. xyz think... flags turned on <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> do you think we are approaching a browser monopoly with chrome like we did with ie no i'm gonna i want to point out here i think there's a difference between chrome and chromium <laughs> and I think a lot of people conflate them. Um, a lot of things are powered by Chromium behind the scenes, and I do think we're moving towards more of a standard there. I don't think that's owned necessarily by Chrome. That is the most like fiddly um actually reply that I think I've ever given. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like we are seeing some standardization around like Edge and. Uh, Firefox and Chrome, I believe, are all Chromium browsers. <laughs> well, Firefox, Firefox is Gecko, right? Safari is WebKit. And then... Right. Okay, so I was wrong on Firefox. So many yeah. of these things are built on top of Chromium that you're unaware, like, you don't even think of, and then you find out that, like, hey, someone's just building a random browser on Chromium somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
I'm one of those obnoxious people that's not using a standard browser. I use a standard one when I build and test, but I'm technically, I use Arc for like daily work and that's Chromium based. So it's cool, you end though. up getting that like parody of features. I haven't hmm. tried the new developer mode though yet. Is Me neither. Cool? I haven't oh, tried it yet. yet. Yeah, I, I got the email for it. I was like, oh, I want to try that. <laughs> Me too. No, I'm still in like Chrome for uh, developing. But I do want to check it out. <laughs> I think another another uh, perspective answer to this is uh, interop, right? Interop kind of mm. trying to help with that, trying to make everyone on the same uh, yeah level. <laughs> yeah, I think also you know it, it's good to be vigilant about monopolies, but you have to look at the actual harm. Like I f feel so far we don't have. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but personally, I haven't felt negative effects from chrome being popular and chromium being popular um on the other hand like you know um on, on ios for example i think it's clear that there are negative effects for uh, apple's monopoly over browser engines so you know i don't think we can say okay it's a monopoly so it's automatically more bad it does increase the risks of some things being bad but so it's far at least though, i think because yeah. I, say, I, mean, I think we do see Safari leading the push for some features, though, like P3 colors yeah, yeah, yeah. and some of that color support, I think is Chromium is being forced to play a little bit of catch up some of these other browsers because Safari is one of the first to implement the new color modes without any kind of a feature flag or anything because the Apple devices <laughs> want that bigger range of color. So, yeah, so it's not we get a little all, bit of, all, yeah. yeah, shades of gray and it's not... <laughs> You can't just say, oh, it's a monopoly, yeah. so it's automatically bad. Different monopolies have different factors. And even when it's mostly bad, they can still be have some positive effects. So, Well, I think the I'm, point was really cl clear as well. Like um, when you said it's Chrome and Chromium, like that's kind of a big <laughs> difference here as well, right? Like you said, like you could, you can build all these different browsers and they can build their flavor and how, what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. But the same engine underneath is pretty, pretty handy. Um, mm. for support so yeah mm -hmm. check in make sure there's no more questions but i think i haven't seen the i've been keeping an eye on chat and i haven't seen any more come through oh, but we'll keep it if you keep throwing them in there we'll keep answering them up to a point and then i'm going to bed <laughs> so. I love you so much. <laughs> you're, so, you're so brave to go to bed so early. The night is young, my darling. Okay, no. yes, we're not in the same time zone, Alyssa. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but some slack. <laughs> I am so so grateful for you, Sasha, and for Jay, and just like our, our other guests taking time today uh, to break this down, release it, go through it. Um, talk about really this past year, and Catherine was wanting some predictions. So, do I either love a you prediction? Have any loved... <laughs> particularly the saucier, the better. Not to you know make it too. I want to get cool. something really disruptive and controversial. Yes, that's on what tape I was. So yeah. that next year for State of CSS, we can <laughs> play it back. <laughs> Nothing here will be used against you in the court of law, right? So that's just all you need to worry Put about. Put this in a court. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I I'm going to start. I'm going to say my prediction is that we're going to see a move towards vanilla CSS, I guess, or mm -hmm. basically fewer frameworks, fewer CSS and JS, more things maybe like CSS modules or, or SAS modules, mm -hmm. uh, or like Astro has its own flavor of like it's an implementation, but it's still vanilla CSS. It's still um, pretty standard. So I, I think we're going to move away from maybe things like style components, which are really, really their own thing. Um, and thanks, that's thanks to CSS itself, adding you know variables, cascade layers, a lot of uh, nesting, more features that make those extra bells and whistles kind of less required for many developers. Um, so, I mean, the reason I made that prediction is that it means I will, I might have to rethink, for, for example, you might notice that we don't have the preprocessor category this year. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, because it seemed like, yeah, we don't need to keep asking people about SAS and less because it's, it feels well, a bit less. Hmm? Stylus, <laughs> of course, the, 
<laughs> you gotta look at poor one out <laughs> for Sash. Uh, you don't have to rub it in, Sasha. We know <laughs> they're dying. So uh, this year was the first year where, where it really felt like there was a turning point where the library section of the survey was less important than the features section. And I think it's going to keep going this way. So in the future, who knows? We might be focus even more on features and even less on mm -hmm. libraries. And I think that's the direction CSS is going. And that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my prediction. <laughs> Thank you, B1 Mind. That was a very sweet comment. I love the prediction, Sasha. I'm excited to see if it comes true. Although it's going <laughs> to weird. If you're going to like give yourself six months, you know, like if you're like, we're doing a summer release of the next survey. That doesn't give your prediction a long time to pan out, but you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Well, I can always change the data, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I run this. <laughs> oh, Jay, any, any? I was gonna say as well, like the web's evolving at an incredible rate, six months, oh, no. what can oh, happen? Who knows? <laughs> um, I'd probably, yeah, back onto them and just say, yeah, more of, more interest, more awareness for vanilla stuff, but, I would say I saw the prediction on the conclusion was that nesting and was it color are going to be like the big ones, the big hitters. Mm. I don't know. I think co color is such a big topic. I talk about this with Adam sometimes on Adam Argyle and it's like there's so much depth to it. Um, and yeah, the adoption of it might be an interesting one. Um, for me, I think probably select menu will be a big one although that's a component but the things that make it up so pop over and css anchoring will be interesting but i would love to see the return of app property which i'm hoping to do some work on mm. scroll linked animations which could be close and view transitions i think that's going to be a game changer because it will work nicely in a progressively enhanced way potentially that sounds like a really full year. <laughs> Good lord! It kept going! <laughs> I mean, if you had to sum up this year, though, that's what it would sound like. No, that's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this, year, this year was crazier, and you've still got everything from this year to land properly. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Alyssa? Uh, view transitions. Oh, no. There's no saucy predictions from this girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want in on the prediction game. <laughs> what? I don't. I don't like this game, Catherine. I make other people play it. <laughs> I I tend to be awful wrong. You know, I hang on to a lot of horses. I shouldn't hang on. You could to. play it safe. You could be like, yeah. oh, CSS has is going to be because that's in yeah, the has now the for Firefox. For has. I feel like it's there though. Like I feel like. There was so much hype for Has. Has needs no more hype. All right, it is cool. I agree. Although I oh, still haven't used it, or maybe I've used maybe, it once. I think. You have maybe shut the front door. <laughs> really? I was one. I was like, yeah, obviously. Who hasn't used that? Like that was. <laughs> I think I've spoke about it like it seven times now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe if you don't want to give a prediction, what's your hope for CSS? Oh my goodness. Peace. Uh, my... World peace. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did I did. Unerringly positive. <laughs> <laughs> I did make a comment that I thought was utterly witty. On There was like a lot of chatter around this feature, right? I don't want people like hunting it down, so I'm not going to be too specific. And I made a comment and I thought it was hilarious. It was suggestion for what the attribute should be. And they just kept rolling right on through with their serious bro hats on. And I was like, can we not be human here? I get that we're serious spec talking, but so I guess my hope is that I really loved what you said, Catherine, about the React community and bringing it back to the basics and making it more of like a norm to like talk about these things. And I really hope that, you know, it's not on the committee. It's actually on the community and the people who are like forerunners and thought and like teaching to make it an acceptable thing. So that's, I really, I think... This next year, it will become a more welcoming and inclusive place for beginners and noobs in general, like with CSS. That's my prediction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's a good one. <laughs> what do you have for us, Catherine? I know it's good. Oh, for me? Um, uh, my prediction, I think we are seeing 
from like a tooling standpoint, a shift towards this approach with design systems. And we saw a little bit of that reflected, right? You know, whatever, 37%. But we also saw in the tool section, the rise of these kind of UI kit associated uh, tools, things like Material UI, Shocker UI, we're right at the top of that tools list. I think we're going to see that kind of stuff continue to spike. I think the mm-hmm. way companies are approaching CSS is going to shift in a way that's design system focused, and we're going to see tooling that supports that. Mm-hmm. So good or bad, I'm not going to say. There's no, there's no opinion coming from me on that, but I would mm-hmm. expect to see more the more uh you more css tools that end in ui <laughs> so are you saying watch this space for bootwind ui or tail yeah <laughs> yeah. Was it, yeah what was the one earlier tailstrap yeah. no that... <laughs> <laughs> oh man so there we go we'll see a year from now or maybe this summer <laughs> if I'm right. <laughs> well, or, or maybe pretty soon for the state of JS as well. That's true. That one, that was a, a good overlap. I get to just reuse my prediction when we're on again in a month. <laughs> and swap the names out. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to play the, that same video, but just replace every time I say CSS with JS. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just like a really obvious, yeah. like... <laughs> Like dub. <laughs> Welcome to the state of JavaScript. Java, no, but you gotta make it really, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, we have a date for that one, right? Did we did we say the date? I am mm. pulling up a date. Oh my gosh, I should know this. <gasps> the tenth, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. That's January, right. January tenth, right? Mm-hmm. Not December. 10th. No, uh, not just. <laughs> Yeah. January. Yes, yeah. you were absolutely right. I yes. will try to get the results out uh, in December, but just in case that doesn't happen, uh, it's yeah. good to have a little bit of uh, margin. So, so go take that survey if you haven't yet. Yeah, it's open and, right now. Yeah, good point. And check out the CSS results and leave feedback if you have any. But mm-hmm. I really am just super excited and grateful. Thank you both for coming on and being our <laughs> guest this evening morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, well, that is a wrap. We are out. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>